I'm here today to introduce one of our most exciting collections from the British Library Manuscripts Collection, which is a series of letters from Ada Lovelace to the computer pioneer Charles Babbage. And together, both Ada Lovelace and Babbage are seen as really the first people who created what is now today a modern computer. And this collection is a volume, um, uh, this is a collection of about 20 volumes of letters written to Charles Babbage. And within them, there are a series of correspondence from Ada Lovelace to Babbage, really about their work on the, the beginnings of a computer. Ada Lovelace was born in 1815 and she was roughly contemporary with the writer Charlotte Bronte, to put things in perspective. Um, and she died when she was relatively young at the age of 36. And Charles Babbage was her senior. He was born in 1791 and he lived until 1871. So he actually extended way beyond um, the passing of Ada Lovelace. Ada Lovelace was the daughter of the romantic poet, Lord Byron, but he left very, very early on um, in her childhood and really had very little influence on her as she was growing up. And her mother really encouraged that Ada pursued her interest in mathematics, um, which she felt was somehow a counterbalance to the madness of poetry. Um, and so Ada Lovelace, she was clearly an incredibly bright and precocious young girl. And she was taken on one of her tutors was Mary Somerville, um, the polymath mathematician. And um, Mary Som Somerville introduced her to Babbage. And it struck up what was a, a sort of I say a lifelong friendship. It really was a lifelong friendship for, for Ada Lovelace because before she died, she even asked Babbage um, to be one of her executors. So the letters here really show the beginnings of a correspondence between sort of an established gentleman in his field and a young girl. But in no way do you see any imbalance in the relationship. You see two keen and inquiring minds problem solving, um, and both very much feel equal um, when you read through the correspondence. So one of the, the things that Babbage and Lovelace worked on was the analytical engine. And Babbage had uh, created a, his, a calculating machine or engine and he sort of developed it and then started a new project, which was the analytical engine. And he gave a lecture about that engine when he was at Italy and somebody called Luigi Menabrea, um, who was actually, he was, he was quite young at this stage, uh, was really influenced by Babbage's lecture. And he published on this machine in French, in a journal. And a couple of years later, Ada Lovelace translated this article in French by Menabrea, uh, which was essentially um, the first publication in English about... Um, about sort of the modern day computing, computer. And Ada Lovelace, not only did she translate and publish the article, she also added a series of notes alongside her translation, really building on Babbage's thinking and work. And so what you see in the letters between Lovelace and Babbage is Lovelace talking about her the development of her understanding and thinking, not just about her translation of Menabrea's article, but also about how this analytical machine will develop and how it will work. And you see throughout the letters, um, Lovelace is talking about notes, and she'll talk about note A and B and C and D. And these were the appendages to, to this translation and article. Um, and... This is one of the first letters that we've got from Lovelace to Babbage. And she says, will you do me the favour of showing your calculating machine to an old friend of mine who is on leave, on leave of absence from India and is ret to return there immediately? It is Mr. Henry Siddons, grandson of the Mrs. Siddons. 
And already you can start seeing these networks of connection between Lovelace and Babbage and Siddons, and you see that throughout this correspondence. Um, and and Lovelace goes on to say she's very keen to see um, the, the machine, and she calls it your old machine. And therefore that really shows that they're also working on something new as well. She also really interestingly talks about the Bridgewater Treaties, which the Ninth Bridgewater Treaties, which was Charles Babbage's response to the eight Bridgewater Treaty Treaties that were written on really um, religion and theology and actually how they fitted with science and the natural world. Um, so already this letter is showing Ada Lovelace, how connected she is, how well read she is, how informed she is. Um, and the, these, all of these letters continue to show that sensibility throughout. Throughout these volumes, there are some notes by Babbage himself, and this is his notes on presenting a lot of his thinking to the Prime Minister, Robert Peel. Um, so again, you, you see actually Ada Lovelace in context with the work more widely. And this volume in particular, I mean, if I, if I list names like Charles Lyell, um, Darwin, there's Brunel, there are hundreds of sort of the most well-known geologists, mathematicians, astronomers that feature in these volumes. And they are in incredibly good company with Ada Lovelace. And her voice holds its own alongside these other well-known voices. A lot of this correspondence, as well as talking about mathematical and engineering problems, um, contained the logistics of working on such problems. And this letter from the 14th of August 1842, Lovelace says... My dear Babbage, will you come Sunday morning the 21st instead of Saturday? I find it will suit me better. Um, and pray that you stay till Wednesday morning. We have friends coming who I'm very desirous that uh, you, you should meet. In haste, A. A. Lovelace. And um, she's at Ockham Park in Surrey, which was the really beautiful 17th century mansion where she, she lived with her husband. Within this volume, there are other objects, printed objects, and I think they're just a reminder to set Lovelace and Babbage again in a wider world of research and interest. And this is a poster for the observatory of in Campton Hill in, in Kensington um, and for the Royal Astro Astronomical Society. And... These thing, things like this are actually interleaved around the letters. And again, it's just thinking about not just networks of connection, but actually what they're physically doing in and around London and indeed, you know, networks across with network networks across Europe as well. Every so often within the albums, you actually see Babbage's response, which is fantastic. Um, and this one to, to Ada uh, Lovelace, from the 16th of March, 1843, he says um, they want to he wants to talk over the notes on Menabrea. And again, it's showing how this conversation that they had about Ada's work on Menabrea and indeed both of their work on the analytical engine continues over a period of time. And at this point in this particular volume, um, from a, it's July 1843, there's suddenly a large section of letters by Ada Lovelace to Babbage, and it really starts to show how they're both working and thinking, not just about um, the development of the analytical engine, but also, and indeed her, her article, um, her translation of Menabrea and the notes that are attached to it, but also the logistics of publishing as well and problems about pagination um, and, and other things. And so, again, it's thinking about Lovelace in context. She was an absolutely brilliant analytical mind, but she was more than that. She was actually able to think about wider logistical problems at the same time. These letters also show that Ada was 
aware of her own talents. And in a letter of the 2nd of July, 1843, when she's writing to Babbage, um, she says, here will be a fine field for my clear, logical and accurate mind to work its powers upon. So she's absolutely aware that she is talented uh, in this field and she's very much an equal to Babbage. In a letter uh, on, we think, probably the 23rd of July, 1843, um, because this one's only dated Sunday, uh, she says, I've worked incessantly um, and quite successfully all day. And that's the sense you get through all of these letters. She, she doesn't stop working. Um, and it's lovely because she talks about her husband. She says, Lord L, or Lovelace, is at the moment kindly inking it all over for me. And again, she, she's, talking, she's talking about the indices of this article. And the letter goes on. It starts talking about the different notes that relate to the article. And they become incredibly detailed. And they also expand upon um, the cards that we use for the machine, uh, the analytical machine, um, and actually how it, how it was to function as well. And that's another really important thing about Ada Lovelace. She isn't just theoretical. What she's writing about, it can be physically used in what became the first computer. And that, that's sort of a really, really important moment when we think we are where we are today. What she was doing and talking about in these letters and with Babbage, that was the beginning of sort of something that, you know, we use almost every second of our days um, in the modern world. And as the letters go on, she says, there is not much correction for note, I send you the whole of it. And obviously with these letters, there were manuscripts going backwards and forwards. And I think we always need to remember actually that these letters were the primary way of communicating if you weren't in person um, or weren't with somebody in person. Um, and therefore actually, this backwards and forwards of, of correspondence physically and with the manuscripts, this is how the information was transmitted and then how it was actually in the end ultimately sent, sent to publishers for, for um, her article to be published. One really interesting thing about the article is that Lovelace's name doesn't actually appear on it. it it's the translation of Menebrea, um, but her initials do s appear next to the translations. And it's really interesting in this letter here of, which says Thursday, we think it's Thursday, um, probably the 4th of July, 1843. Um, they're talking about whether, whether she says, my husband or Lord L suggests my signing uh, the translation and the notes, with which he means simply putting at the end of each section translated by AAL and adding to it note, each note, the initials AAL. Um, and it's interesting thinking about parallels with anonymity and thinking about the writer Charlotte Bronte, whose dates are almost equal to Lovelace's. And obviously she was writing underneath um, with a pseudonym, Carabelle. And Lovelace, although she uses her own initials, um, and there was less scandal around her identity, and she was a well-known public figure. Nevertheless, it's interesting that their full names are not out there. And when you think about the contribution that both of them have made in completely different fields, but just how huge a contribution, um, the fact that they were pretty much anonymous when they were working with their publications are pretty much anonymous um, is quite incredible now to think about.